welcome back. It's been Ram with Youth and Politics, and you heard what youths need to do to get into leadership positions. You even heard some leaders saying that it's time for youth, some should retire, and so that youth, youth themselves can get into the real power. And now what we ask ourselves, are the youth themselves prepared? What are the youths doing already? Already doing, not what they will do, what they already do. Uh, what they are already doing to show that they are ripe and ready for it. And that's why we are in this conversation with two experts here. I'm happy to call you experts because you are people who are already doing something. Uh, one is Wendy. Wendy Ingwil is not uh, uh, new here. And the one is Sefas Dirangu. So Wendy, we'll start with you. You are going to comprehensively um, introduce yourself, including your Facebook, uh, Twitter, social media, handles and what you are doing right now. Welcome. Okay. Uh, my name is Wendy Ingwell George, uh, a young leader and currently I am, I am participating in different vol volunteer programs. I do Girl Rising that deals with girls and uh, it works with SDG4. Uh, apart from Girl Rising, I also involve myself in in other community services. Uh, currently, I started, a, it's kind of, it's an initiative, kind of a club thing, but I started it on, on Facebook and I'm a co-founder as well with another young lady and uh, it's called Talent Star Hubs. It's on Facebook, you can find us on Facebook. For my personal handles on Facebook, you'll find me at Wendy Ingwell G. Um, on Twitter, I'm not so vibrant on Twitter, but I'm there, Wendy Ingle G, and uh, also on, on Instagram, I use the same handles. Thank you. Yeah. Now you see why, why I chose Wendy for this particular topic. And again, we have another person called uh, Sefas Nirangu. Sefas, I've only told them your name, and it's your first time here. So tell them everything about you, apart from being Sefas Nirangu. Ah, wonderful. My name is Nirangu, Sefas. I am... Uh, 25 year old um, gentleman. I have studied, I have a bachelor's in community development and a master's degree dropout in organizational leadership. Currently, I am bringing together professionals um, to join in um, community organization because that's what I believe is the game changer in terms of um, our politics and even citizen participation in in general activities. So it's something that we can be able to discuss further as we go on, but that's that's what I'm currently doing at the moment. Wow, so you are an expert in this field. Yes. I um, love the fact that you studied even community development mm -hmm. and even continuing to pursue masters on, on the same field or something. Organizational leadership, but I've put it on hold mm. um, to pursue what I feel is most urgent in this country mm. right now. Mm. Yes, and that's why I'm there. Uh, just starting with you, mm -hmm. and according to your study background and mm -hmm. all this, mm -hmm. do you think youths are participating, the current Kenyan youth, do you think they are doing enough mm -hmm. on their own mm -hmm. to help improve their hood or their villages? People are working, the youth are working, but it's not coordinated. There is, um, there is um, something that's called multiplication. Um, duplication of projects mm. in community development mm. but you have one person doing a foundation another person doing a foundation mm. instead of coming together and meeting the very same objectives mm. people are want, want to do things independently mm. so we have two similar organizations targeting the same group of people um, and so there's not much efficiency and effectiveness in what we are supposed to do so mm. I don't think that we are doing enough Mm. And uh, what we are doing currently is not being done in the proper way, in mm. my opinion, yes. Uh, so uh, according to you, the problem is coordination, yes. which has now brought back, uh, uh, gave birth to another problem, which is duplication. Yes. Uh, are you, as a person, as a professional, mm -hmm. doing something mm -hmm. to address this? Um, I'm bringing up that conversation. Um, I have a background. That's what brought me to Nairobi to start having these conversations. I believe that change starts by having the right conversations. Mm. So we need to be able to understand what is the, uh, what is the, uh, what's, what's, what's the role of community organizations mm. in bringing about the change. What I've observed 
uh, as a person is that we are having a lot of conversations that are not pegged on following up activities mm. with them. Mm. You see, if you have, if you go to school and you keep on studying and studying and there is no end, there is no point of going to, 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 to school and everything. Mm. But if you go to school and at the end, at the end of your education, you're expected to do something, that's what counts. So I have, I'm doing what is civic education on what community development ought to be and how it ought to be practiced. Mm. Um, Ram was having a conversation with the, the guests that he was mentioning that people come and say one thing as aspiring members of parliament and then at two weeks after the orientation they learn that this is not the job description that we signed for mm. so they're not able to be effective if we are able to have um to have the right information as to how we are supposed to do things mm. we're going to be more effective so currently i'm educating people online and also in person conversations and i believe that it's it's going in the right direction we'll come back to you tell us more about that let mm -hmm. us come back to wendy wendy yeah i am happy and i've told you i picked you because you i know you are already doing something mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on youth participation generally youth participation and so total issues or community development whether social or, or physical and all that i think one of the problems that you face as youth is that we want to get things fast. We want to do things rather in a more faster way and gain them. And we forget that there is a process to which you need to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, um, I've, I graduated in 2019. I love personal experiences. Yes, I graduated in 2019. And since I graduated, I wouldn't say that I've really been employed in any office. Mm. Whatever I do today, is as a result of connections and networks that I've had with different people. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is no day that I've really sat in an office, like 24 hours, that I'm employed there. Mm -hmm. Most of these things I do, I get them from people I meet from different places. Mm -hmm. And this is something that the youths, rather they have it, but they don't want to use it. Mm -hmm. You get to meet different people. People. Today I've met Sefas. Yes. I've had all the things that he has yes, talked about. Yes. If I wanted to link up with him, mm. I will link up with him. Mm -hmm. And I will ask him for platforms mm. that can enable me get Rise. something. Mm. Or even if I'm not getting it. Mm. So let me use an example of I've really volunteered. And so many things that I've volunteered in mm. have led me to getting... Uh, getting activities to do, mm. getting things to involve myself in. Mm. And by the end of the day, I've earned something from whatever I get from the other person. So that is something that the youth in the society are not really working towards. We are all waiting for Serikali to Pekazi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have gone to school, but I have ideas in my mind. If today, and I stop looking at myself like I'm this young lady who has gone to school and I deserve all I want in the world. If I stop looking at myself that way and tell myself that for me to get to where I want to be, I have to start from somewhere. Mm. And where I'm going to start from, from it's, it is going to be dependent on my surrounding and the people I interact with. Mm. Then it's going to be very important that I take up every small opportunity that I get. If I can start a business, let me start that business mm. and see where it gets me to. Mm. If I can start a small organization, let me start it and see where I can get funds and see where I can get different activities without waiting for Serikali Nipekazi or rather waiting for a job that will pay me some 30,000 by the end of the month. I will tell you that I don't get 30,000 by the end of the month. You get more But than that. I get sometimes, uh -huh. I, not that I get more than that, <laughs> but it can pay for my bills. Mm. It can settle some of my, Your my problems, bills. Yeah. So it's, it's not like I need to be seated somewhere. And it also gains me skills, different skills. It puts me somewhere across so that when I'm employed somewhere, I can work anywhere and I'll be very comfortable working there. Let's get maybe away from you, Kidogo. Mm. Uh, are there tangible changes that you can pinpoint that you've made to individuals' lives or as society as a whole? Um, I have done my part and I believe that through doing my part, because like recently, 
I facilitate a program in the informal settlements. Mm -hmm. Places like Madare, somewhere along Kiboro, there is a school there. And I go to them, I talk to them, it's more like life skills. I talk to these young boys and girls and I encourage them to, like, they want to have that urge for education because mm -hmm. personally I've seen where it has brought me mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So I believe through the little talkings that I have with them. Plus I am a mentor. Mm -hmm. I have mentored a good number of people and sometimes I am happy of my success because I've seen these people flourishing in their different fields that I helped them to go through. Wow. So for me it's something so beautiful to see someone flourishing out of something small that he told them. Yeah. Um, Sefas as an expert, mm -hmm. what do you think of Wendy? Um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, coordination. Um, she is doing a lot, but it can be amplified by bringing together people. And I, and I love that she's big on networking, because networks are what bring people together and make bigger things to be able to happen. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can relate with a number of things that she's mentioned in that um, throughout my campus years, all, all short, long-term holidays, I was able to volunteer, worked with different organizations, had four, four volunteer experiences by the time I was graduating in 2018. And um, one of the things that I, that I noted was that you'd have, because in that year I did a civic education program uh, to stop by road pollution because it's a problem that I had noted. So despite having the information, there wasn't much that government was able to do with the information that I was able to acquire. And so it, it's things like this that drove me out of, out of employment hmm. because I was working, I do work as a part-time photographer and um, we're also running a small family business. Then every evening I'd have, I'd have a lot of thoughts because you, you get to hear that this is going on, this is going on. I didn't feel it proper for me to earn from a business knowing very well that I can be able to enable more people get employment mm -hmm. by bringing coordination into the picture. So I think that she is doing a lot um, and it's, it's, it's very impressive that what, what she's doing and the impact, the, the ripple effect that it's going to have, especially when you touch on the information sector and the education sector. You know, no, so far as Kenya is a, 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 a young nation, mm -hmm. and uh, by young I don't mean the age of independence, mm -hmm. but I mean the population, mm -hmm. majority of population mm -hmm. are young, mm -hmm. like 64% uh, uh, mm -hmm. of Kenyans are are uh, below the age of 30. Mm -hmm. Now what currently we describe as youth is the age of between 15 to 30. Mm -hmm. That is 29%. Mm -hmm. No, that is age set. And uh, when uh, that is age group. Mm -hmm. So age, youth as age group is the majority. Mm -hmm. Other age groups include uh, children, mm -hmm. middle age, mm -hmm. the senior members of the society mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are only talking about coordination. Mm -hmm. Do you think majority of mm -hmm. our youths mm -hmm. are uh, as charismatic as Wendy? Mm -hmm. Do you think the the only thing lacking is coordination, mm -hmm. but they are doing something? Yes. Um, as charismatic as her, not very many. Why? Because it is something that has been frowned upon on. Um, from when you... And, and, and when you talk about charismatic in this sense, I believe that you're mentioning charismatic in that she's a go-getter, she wants to yes. have charisma people. Charisma in terms of societal service. Yes. yes. It's not something that has been glorified um, in the entire education system. Uh, because when I did community development, most people were, what, what is this about? You see? So even when you get out here, the things that are being seen as good things are things like owning a car. Um, owning a good house or things of the sort. Mm -hmm. So if we were able to have people who champion, um, Dr. Ben Carson mm -hmm. was talking about, she, he was addressing a, a plenary in, in the US some, some years back and she was, he was saying that sports people, when they win, they, were, they get trophies, you see? Mm -hmm. So society sees it as something worth pursuing mm -hmm. because you see at the end there's that glory, there's that trophy, mm -hmm. there's that many things of the sort. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to education, if you're smart, you're just told, hey, when it's your pee, you know, mm -hmm. that's the end mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So we need to find people who are going to um, bring out 
people like her mm. and praise them and, and, and give them things like awards, like the head of state commendation, things of the sort, to show that this is something worth pursuing and then giving people like her forums in which other people can get to know that people are finding satisfaction in getting to serve people. Mm. Not everybody should get into it. It's not something that everybody should yeah. pursue. Everybody should, but it's not everybody who should quote unquote start an organization to do the same work. Like I said, duplication, duplication of projects. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I don't think many people are like her because of the st reasons that I've stated. Mm. Yes. Back to you, Andy. You have so many age mates. I want to ask you the same thing that I have asked him. You are t as a participant, mm -hmm. him as an expert, mm -hmm. because when you do masters in something, you means you have mastered it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you have age mates. You have those with whom you went to school. Mm -hmm. Are they doing the same thing? Are they? Uh, do you see them participate? in changing lives of the society and of people. What is your rating? How, are you, how do you rate your age mates, your school mates, and all that in terms of how they participate in changing their hoods and villages? Okay, um, I would commend a good number of them because mm -hmm. in the different fields that they are in, mm. they, are, they are definitely doing something there. Mm. And um, but there I forgot to mention, I did uh, political science and public administration. That's your profession. Yeah, that's okay. uh, what I studied, what not my studied. profession, but rather what I studied. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so uh, these young people are doing something in their societies. And around me, I would say that, okay, truth could be that some of us, just like I mentioned before, some of us want it fast, but some of us are ready to go through the process. And the process, uh, the other day I was reading some, some, some write-up somewhere and like everyone was complaining that it is time that the process starts to also trust us. Mm -hmm. We've been trusting the process so much. <laughs> and it is very hard. Like it's very hard when you're trusting the process and you feel like the process re is really failing you mm. and you feel like uh, I'm going to give up because no one is giving me a pat on the back for whatever I'm doing. What did I say? Yeah, yeah, no one is giving Nobody me a pat on the back. Yeah, know. no one is appreciating mm. me and it is time that Niachane Nayo or should I just continue doing this? Mm. And sometimes when you don't have your inner self, like you do the introspection he talks about, you're not having your inner self and by the end of the day you're telling yourself, why am I doing this? The, is there a motivation as to why I'm doing this? Is there a goal as to why I'm doing this? And when you come to understand that you can answer those questions by yourself, then you will find yourself you will find yourself doing these things, continue doing them, even no, when no one is giving you a pat on the back, but you're encouraging yourself that by the end of the day, as long as I'm encouraging someone somewhere to be better with their lives, and when you wake up the next morning, you can see from them that they are really doing it, and you're like, okay, that is my motivation, and I'll still continue doing this, and asking those around me in my different capacity, because... I would say with my peers, there are those who are doctors, there are those who are lawyers, there are those who are, there are those who are chefs, there are those like different kinds mm. of professions. Mm. And I would say that they are really doing well in whatever they're doing, those who are teachers. Mm. I'm seeing they're really doing well in as much as they're not yet there, mm. but wherever they are, they are doing yeah, they're doing something. Uh, you, she has told us a lot of what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But I believe you, there's also what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that people out there will see, mm -hmm. at least some people are doing something, mm -hmm. so that maybe they're inspired to do the mm -hmm. same things. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you're doing. Um, it's information. Mm -hmm. It's sharing. You see, the foundation of sustainable development is mm -hmm. the right information. Mm -hmm. Once you have the right information mm -hmm. on what should be done, is that's, 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 that's when sustainable development can come. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm starting is an, an, a network mm -hmm. of professionals coming together to do um, the, different, the different responsibility, among their different, uh, implementing the, the different skills that they have mm. towards the betterment of the country mm -hmm. with the direct thing, among the direct goal being to better the country.
Mm. It's what it it's what worked for um, Singapore, because when you hear the first prime minister when they talked about in 1963 that people came together, and it was their one and only goal to make our country better. I think that's something that lacks in our country in that we want to better ourselves to put a buffer zone around the injustices that are that are being experienced in this country, and the hardships that people are experiencing. So you want to work hard to create a small zone a small bubble of yours in which you can be kept safe so we're bringing together people um, of different trainings different skills masons um, engineers doctors uh, carpenters anyone who, who wants to be on board and and, and um, take kenya to the next level so you are bringing people together yes to as the first stage as the first stage yes. what do you intend to to do after that first stage when you have when you have the right people and you have a vision Leadership is when you are able to influence people to follow or to, to believe in the vision that you have and follow you as you implement it. So you need to start by showing them what you are able to do. My goal is to um, have an efficient and an effective country. Of, so so the, the key things that we want to bring about is prosperity, professionalism, and um, prosperity, professionalism, yes, prosperity and professionalism mm -hmm. by bringing professionals together. That is the goal that I have. So it starts by uh, bringing the vision clear to everybody and then now implementing where, it. Where? Where and how do you do it? Um, I'm a social worker. On, on, on Twitter, I'm, I'm the development coach. Oh, yes. you call development the coach development on coach. Twitter? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is how a coach works. A coach is not a striker. Mm. A coach is not a defender. He's mm. not a midfielder. Mm. He directs. He's not even a goalkeeper. He's not a goalkeeper. Yeah, he directs people. Yes, mm -hmm. but he brings the best people on board to create an an, 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 an unbeatable team, right? Mm. So that's what is going to be my responsibility because I'm trained all round in health, um, accounts, in um, transport, all these things I'm, I'm trained in. As, as a social worker, I can't be able to work on them. So what you do is you bring together, um, for example, you're bringing to, um, let me give a, a good example. When, you, when, you, when I was coming from Thika Road, you find that traffic starts at around NYS, mm. Mm. all the way to Nairobi. What you need to, what can be, uh, from, from research, you find that the problem that you're having in the public transport sector is that they are not, the, the public transport services are not effective, they're not efficient in terms of time, in terms of the services that are brought. So you need to bring stakeholders in the transport sector. So you're bringing conductors, you're bringing drivers, you're bringing investors, you're bringing government. All these people, enable them to come up with a framework and then lead them, uh, or rather, let them lead themselves mm. in bringing the change that is there. So when you bring people together and you share the little skill that you have and they bring the information, uh, participate, that's called participatory de development. Yes, so it's not limited in any, in any specific sector. Let me give you another example. I went to the, um, on Twitter I saw that, 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 I don't know whether you've come across it, but there are very many blood appeals. Mm. Mm. Like somebody needs blood mm. here, somebody needs blood mm. there. Mm. So I decided to take a walk, I went to the Kenya National blood transfusion center i asked them um wh what's the procedure if if somebody has an organization mm. uh, uh, or um, institution say like church and would want to donate and they told me all you need to do is just tell us when mm. you're not paying anything mm. they have the tents mm. they have the equipment they have the staff basically it's just if you have a church if you have a church, just tell them, um, next Sunday, we are going to be donating blood, come prepared, have a snack or something of the sort, and then donate blood. Just by that, you'll have met a need in the country. I was talking mm. with a friend of mine, she was telling me that one time she wanted to go and donate blood. When she got there, the person had already died. What? Yes. Okay. So it's, it's, the, it's a small it's You've a small told thing. us how you do it. So yes. where you do it mostly is Twitter? Yes, online uh. and personal engagements. So um, it's stakeholder engagement, meeting with different people. For mm. example, I've met one of the presidential aspirants, mm -hmm. um, getting to discuss with them, um, different, meeting different politicians as, I, as, as they allow me to. Yes. What do you think uh, is doing what you really need as a link for your success? Okay, I, okay, for, yes, because 
he will link me up with my stakeholders like those people who work in the same field mm -hmm. as I do or rather those people who have the same interests mm -hmm. as I do so he is doing a great job because sometimes like he talks about the blood donation thing mm -hmm. you know before you get to the hospital and the person that is very sad by the way the person is already dead and you are very willing to do that what he's doing is like saving this person before the other gets to the hospital mm. so he's doing it earlier than the time that it should be done so i rather think he's doing a very great job as well mm. yeah uh, uh, is there something you want maybe the public to help you mm -hmm. maybe in doing this or maybe in mm -hmm. furthering this is mm -hmm. there what is missing or what is lacking whether it's goodwill whether it's connection mm -hmm. or whether it's what yes mm -hmm. um for, for community development, there is always an opening for everybody, mm -hmm. everyone, no matter your skill, no matter your social status. Um, if you have time, some people have time, some people have uh, money, some people have energy, all of that you can be able to bring, bring it on board and, and be able to bring change. They can reach out to me um, through my Twitter handle, mm. um, Twitter handle, and then we can discuss where best they can be placed with people who also have similar interests and make ch bring change in the country. Somebody was telling me that uh, they are not participating in bettering their hoods because they are not aware how they should do it. Mm -hmm. And one was telling me mm -hmm. that uh, they are not given a chance mm -hmm. to shine. Mm -hmm. I think Wendy addressed that yeah. when she said that she did not wait to be given employment mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is this person justified to say that he's not aware of what he should mm -hmm. do or what she should do? Well, I think so. There's something about information education that, mm -hmm. that, that breaks down. I, I was thinking to myself that at that time when I went to, when I was doing my, my degree, you know, you just sit in class and you listen to people who have been in the field. And, you, and, and without realizing that it changes how you think, mm -hmm. how you see problems, mm -hmm. how you see people and how to encounter things. So if somebody has not been exposed to that type of education, it's, it's possibly justified for them to think that um, maybe I'm too, too small to, to mm. do anything. But when we have um, information brought to them through shows like this, they're able to understand that I can be able to bring change, that offering to give blood, for example, Mm. even when there's no blood appeal, can actually save lives without mm. you knowing. Mm. So when it, it's you know, breaking you it down. You know what Sefas is saying that is that it's contagious. What you do can be contagious to others. Like yes. he's saying being with professional changes his thinking and all that. Yeah. And you uh, are doing great things. Mm. And you have several friends I know. Mm. And uh, even the organizations you belong to, even in church and all that. Mm. Do you think uh, you've influenced some people positively, especially your age mates and the youths, to start uh, being uh, productive to the society as you are? Um, I challenge, I love that I challenge people mm -hmm. by my deeds. I, sometimes I don't go ahead and tell you. I want you to see me and decide what you want to do with yourself. And Sefas talked about, he said something about when you see, and you asked a question about this guy who thinks that he needs someone to go to them and tell them mm -hmm. about, um, sometimes I feel even our upbringing has failed us as young people, because mm -hmm. um, what is community service? Mm -hmm. It is the simple things that you do that you like. This is a child growing up from childhood. And if this child is taught, you know, our environment, we have really invested on the book education than the outside education. Mm. So this is a child being brought up. And this child needs to know that um, when I see maybe we have we have a house help at home. Mm. I can assist this house help in maybe cleaning utensils after food or taking plates out of the table after dinner or after breakfast or mm. at lunch lunch hour. And this is something that maybe our parents has or the society has failed to instill in children. Uh, if you're in primary school and 
I love, I kind of love the CB, CBC kind of setting mm. where you see children cleaning the, the marketplace, mm. the environment, mm. and that is that that in itself is service. And when you do that, you communicate with others. You see how some people are not as advantaged as you are, and you come up with this idea that I don't really need to wait for a white collar job so that I can do some blue collar job as I wait for the white collar job, but as long as it can bring something on my table and it is something genuine for myself, and I'm even not just assisting myself, but even the community around me, then it's going to be an, a very important thing. Yes, and I believe it is, I believe that those around me have seen what I do and some of them feel very, very encouraged because you know sometimes when I get a job to do, and I'm not able to do it, I always call one of my friends mm. and I tell them, I delegate it to them. Mm -hmm. I really love delegating because it teaches the other person mm. to also do it better than you mm. or even just being able to do it is something that is very important. Uh, Somebody is alarmed yeah. that uh, you say you volunteer a lot. Yeah. You no know, voluntary means you're not paid. Eh? Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the month, you have bills to pay. So yeah. somebody is asking if I dedicate the whole of my life to volunteer, mm -hmm. how will I take care of myself? Like, or do you, or, on your part, is there a way you also earn something to take care of your bills so that when you volunteer, mm -hmm. the, uh, you, you don't lack? Okay. Um... I, through the volunteerism, I have got things to do. Like, I, got, I get opportunities. And some of the, some, sometimes I get, co I get called for uh, facilitations. And when I go there, I get my pay. I'm mm. paid for my, the expenses that got me there. For example, my transport and the facilitation mm. itself. So, yes, I volunteer. I do it part-time. So it is not entirely voluntary. You earn somehow hand from it. Yeah. I Can you help it. us this part? Uh, this person who says, how if I volunteer, how will I make the ends meet for myself? Um, it's it's. I I'd say, what what she's just yes. I think I, I do agree with what she's mentioned mm. that mm. you might be having a s small source of income mm. to supplement mm. um, the work that you're doing, but there's also uh, s resource mobilization. It's something that people also do. Maybe if, like I mentioned, everybody has a resource. Mm. So you might find that there's somebody who's passionate in the area that you're in and would want to do something about it, but they don't have the time. But they do have the resources so they can help you to actualize your dream as well as them actualizing their dream through you. Mm. So in the event, you, you can learn a, f a few things about uh, f f uh, raising resources and mm -hmm. raising funds through like-minded organizations. Mm -hmm. Do you also think there are enough policies to help encourage youths to be developing their societies? Do you think there are enough, is the government doing enough, mm -hmm. or the parliament, all the government arms, do you mm -hmm. think they are doing anything or enough mm -hmm. to help encourage the youths to do these things? The model, the model in which most political leaders work is, um, it, it's, not, it's not very encouraging. Allow me to mention, one time I was working with a government office in, in, in Nakuru town. And when people would go outside for, let's say, field work, you'd get maybe an appreciation, a fare of around 500 shillings. Mm. 500 shillings is enough fare, was enough fare for me for the entire work week. Because mm. I was paying approximately 100 shillings. Mm. So if you have a politician getting about f uh, 10,000, 5,000 per sitting, you see, if, if somebody would want to bring change, it's just by using little money like that. Because if, if 500 can pay my fare to and fro for an entire week, um, it, it's, it's more about the goodwill, if, mm. if you ask me. Mm. In terms of the policies, they've, they've mentioned something about um, giving interns around 15,000. I think that was sometime in 20, 2017, 2018. But I haven't seen it implemented um, across the board. I think only interns are able to get uh, are being paid, intern doctors in government. So I think what lacks is the, the goodwill by politicians. The paperwork is, I feel, is okay. Oh, yeah. but it's, it's only good on paper. It, yeah, it's, it's, most, most of our problems is just that lack of political will. 
mm. there's no goodwill in supporting the youth. But the paperwork is there. Some things actually, um, Kayesu, is that you, do, you don't even need paperwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of those things you don't need paperwork. Because mm -hmm. if, if you are, for example, in an, in an office, my friend was telling me that um, they were going out for a, for a trip and they're given a lot of money. If you have the youth uh, interest at heart, the, the least you can do is just even give them a thousand extra mm. or given two thousand, it's going to be able to push them to the ex extra level. So that doesn't need any paperwork for you to be compelled to give them. It just comes from the goodness of your heart. The most place we've seen our youth come together mm -hmm. is when they are destroying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. when there is uh, some politician has had them to stone mm -hmm. some other people, mm -hmm. or when there is madamano, they mm -hmm. break, mm -hmm. they they destroy, they burn the roads, mm -hmm. they uh, stone gl glass houses and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, is it good to say that uh, most of our energies mm -hmm. are diverted negatively? Um, you know, the, the, thing about, the thing about violence is a reflection of where the majority of society is. Yeah. There is a Maslow pyramid in that there are those people who cannot be able to afford even a meal. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an interesting story. We were having sometime in 2020 when Corona had just come in, and people were saying um, there might be there might be a lockdown things of a sort. I think he was a police officer. Mm. He said it's not possible to have a lockdown in Kenya mm. because if you lock down Kenya, there are just too many people, too many poor people who live from hand to mouth. Mm. So what politicians sell is hope, mm. Mm. right? Mm. So if if a young person is convinced that them going to the streets and having their person inside, um, uh, getting the position that they, they, they feel can be able to save them, um, will we'll bring them, will eat our core, mm. then they go to the streets. Mm. So it's that and the small amount of money that maybe they get at the end of the day. Mm. So um, it's, it's poverty that leads us to that. When people are poor, they'll do anything. To, mm. to, to, survive. to survive and get to the next mm. day. Mm. So we need to address poverty among the youth. That's the only way that you can stop political violence, for example. Mm. When did you share the opinion? I share the opinion because, like he said, you go for the work, you're given 500 shillings for fair, mm -hmm. which is very minimal for whatever you're going to do there. And then there is some politician coming in and telling you, I just want you to go and shout in the streets and you will get your 1,500 shillings. Yeah. So tell me, which one will you choose? Mm -hmm. Even if it were you, what will you choose? Basically, I'm just going to shout mm -hmm. and destroy things, mm -hmm. and I'll come home with my 1,500 shillings. Mm -hmm. But this other side, I am going to be involved in a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I am going to use my mind. I'm going to use my profession. Mm -hmm. And I will only get out with 500 shillings. Mm -hmm. So what will you want the youth to choose? Because I still have a lot of expenses mm -hmm. to see through. And 500 shillings will not even be enough. In Nairobi, mm -hmm. you live around Thika Road. 500 shillings is like two days. Mm. That means that you haven't even taken something. Mm. Yeah, so people choose to go for violence because they will get something out of it by the end of the day. Now tell them, uh, think your camera is this camera one. Uh, teach the youth, tell them what you do mm. what that they should also do on your final remarks because time is not on our side. Okay, um, I know as young people it's very tough outside there and we also need the process to start trusting us. We've trusted the process. Uh, some of you have waited longer than I have waited and it is sometimes very like it's frustrating, it's disappointing with all the other challenges that you might go through. But uh, one encouragement that I will need to give us, all of us, is that in as much as the, it goes, it, like, it's going to be tough every other day, toughen yourself as well. Toughen your seat belt and be ready for it. Whatever it is outside there that you can do with the abilities that you have, do it and learn, grow and impact on other people's lives. And I'm encouraging you to be a go-getter. These opportunities are out there, 
but if you don't go for them you will not get them don't wait for someone else to go outside there and bring it to you go for it and you never know someone somewhere is seeing your effort and you will be appreciated for that someday thank that, you that's so i think will mm -hmm. say first yes pour the wisdom in 30 30 seconds 30 seconds um i'd say come only coming together as numerous people can be able to bring change mm -hmm. uh, every so every five years we are promised that if somebody gets into power things will change but we've seen this cycle um, leading us to the place that we were five years ago and having the same conversation that you're having. So I'd implore every one of you, um, respective of your social status, um, in spec that's in terms of marriage, uh, whether you're single, whether you're working, whether you're not, I um, mean, where you're working and things of the sort. Let's come together. Um, reach out to me on my Twitter handle. Let's have a conversation and get to see what we can be able to do. Yeah, I believe that everybody has a resource. I'm leaving you with a quote which say, if you planted a hope today, if you planted hope today in someone's heart which felt alone, if you caused a laugh uh, and chased away some tears, if someone's burden was made lighter because of your kindness, then your day was well spent. And those who feel that uh, volunteering will not pay bills, solve a problem. This is the, the mindset of entrepreneurs, that if you solve a problem, money will follow it. Money is where you solve a problem. This has been uh, uh, Man Crash Monday with Miss Ankara Kayesu, uh, with the experts, and uh, following uh, several programs that will continue lighting your day. This is White Five One. This is the end of Why in the Morning today on Monday. Have a blessed day, and let's keep it together.